Hello YouTubers and welcome to another video from Eagles of Empire Miniatures. In this video we're going to do a unit analysis of the most core unit for the German faction, namely the Prussian Line Infantry. These are uh, the hard-hitting uh, backbone of um, any German army and uh, we got some exciting uh, history to reveal regarding these guys and we'll take a closer look at the unit stats and of course have a tactical discussion about how to use them with the doctrine cards and finally we're going to look at uh, possible heroes to attach to this unit in the game so you can boost your unit's abilities. So let's jump on into this episode and have a look at the Prussian line infantry. So the Prussian line infantry of 1870-71, the Franco-Prussian War, well, they were equipped with a uh, Pickelhaube, the classic German spiked helmet, uh, dated back to um, the 1840s, just before the, the big uh, political unrest across Europe, the Revolutionary Wars of 1848. The German, uh, the Prussian army was equipped with this Pickelhaube uh, that really is... Uh, quintessential for the Prussian infantry, I think. Uh, also worth noticing is that the, the Prussian uh, army was uh, one of the very, very first armies in the world to introduce a breech-loading uh, rifle system, uh, the Dreise needle gun. Now they did this in uh, the 1830s. Uh, I think the, the, the Dreise needle gun was invented in 1836 and it was introduced to the Prussian infantry uh, subsequently and used for the first time in the, um, uh, in the unrest across Germany in 1848. Um, so when we're looking at the later part of the 19th century, the so-called wars of unification, the three wars that Prussia fought, uh, first against Denmark uh, and then against uh, the Habsburg, uh, Habsburg Empire, and then finally against France. Well, the um, this system, this weapon system, would be uh, very innovative in the two first wars. But when they came up against France in the Franco-Prussian War, um, the French had the Chassepot, which was a newer and better system. It had a um, rubber seal to the breech-loading system, so that um, the hot gas from uh, the explosion when the cartridge uh, goes off uh, didn't sieve out and uh, created more uh, velocity on the bullet and uh, a lot more deadly weapon for the chess pole. So um, come the Franco-Prussian War, this needle gun was not all that it had been, but it still was a formidable weapon for the Prussian infantry and they, um, they relied heavily on uh, on the usage of the of the needle gun and of uh, offensive tactics to combine with it. Now the history of the Prussian infantry uh, can't be uh, uh, looked at without mentioning uh, the uh, Prussian Minister of War, Albrecht von Rohn. Von Rohn was uh, like any other of uh, like many other of the denominated names. Von uh, he was a Junker, which means he was a a uh, land Prussian land no, uh, noble, and he was uh, of uh, high trust from from the king Frederick Wilhelm uh, IV, who tasked him with um, modernizing the Prussian army uh, back in the 1850s. So just after the the big unrest across Europe, uh, Prussia went into this um, big renovation and big uh, uh, let's say modernization of their army. Uh, and 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 the result would be the the three wars um, fought uh, to unify Germany. Now, <clears throat> when looking at, at the the uniform, well, there are a um, classic Prussian blue tunic, and uh, they had this uh, gray, dark gray, almost blackish uh, breech, uh, and they will. Uh, be wearing the Pigelhaube uh, mostly. There are also Feldmütze, which is more like a soft cap uh, that can be worn from time to time. Uh, and they have the great coat rolled up over the shoulder, um, as seen in the picture there to the right. There's a little uniform plate. Now, that's a classic Prussian infantryman right there for, uh, for this period. 
The uniforms didn't change much during this whole period. Uh, the only thing that really changed from the from the 1850s and up to the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, well, was the Pegel Harbor got a little more compact. The first version was very much much, much taller uh, and more bell-shaped, whereas uh, yeah, the, the 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 one for the Franco-Prussian War was a little more compressed and, and compact, like the one you see in the image here. Right, so <clears throat> let's go over and. Uh, have a look at tactics. Well, Prussian tactics uh, comprised uh, mainly of a, an offense uh, doctrine. They wanted to be very mobile. They had great um, education for their uh, officers. And um, in many cases, Prussian officers were uh, educated outside the army also. So they would have, there would be a high degree of literacy and a high uh, degree of, uh, uh, let's say, um, autodidact uh, thinking within the, the officer corps. So um, there was a high level also of trust for the, the officers to um, make the right decisions in the uh, situation they were faced with on the battlefield. So they had a high degree of, of freedom and mobility to, to do their own uh, tactical dispositions. Now, that really is a, a big difference between the Prussian and the French army. Where in the French army, the many officers were actually illiterate, uh, and they ha had a high reliance on high command to make the decisions, which would, in many cases, make the French um, army become more um, uh, still standing and passive. Uh, again, the French had also that this would kind of weave into the, the French tactics of the period of. Uh, finding these formidable positions, as they called them, big tactical uh, uh, defensive positions, and they would just dig in and await the Prussians. The Prussian response to this, well, the Prussians uh, being very mobile, being very um, reliant on, on the decision made on the battlefield by the officers, well, they, they had a fantastic response to this. They just, they just met the French uh, still standing strategy by just outflanking them. The sheer number uh, of the Prussian army would allow them to just pour into the battlefield, establish a front line, and then successively from there, they'll just build up pressure on the flanks and just crumble the French, basically. They did this time after time after time in the Franco-Prussian War. Um, and the French really didn't respond uh, to this. For some reason, it just kept on happening, battle after battle. Um, outnumbering uh, the French in many uh, cases and uh, just outflanking them. Um, so this is reflected, this kind of mobility is also reflected. I'm, I'm not going to dive a lot into the doctrine cards, but I just want to mention that the Prussian infantry has an amazing ability on their, their doctrine card <clears throat> called Prussian Tactics, where you can use a command point to... Um, have your unit do a double movement for a round. Now that's going to be really interesting when we look at the hero for the Prussian infantry, Major von Halden. But I'm going to jump into him a little bit later. Let's move on now and have a closer look at the Prussian line infantry basic stats. Yeah, here we go. You have the Prussian unit card, uh, the Prussian line infantry unit card there to your right. In the top right corner, you can see the recruitment cost, which is standard for uh, for infantry and um, movement rate, uh, the needle gun range, firepower, charge value, defensive value, and unit strength all below. Let's have a look at the, the basic movement rate. Well, it's six inches, which is standard for infantry, so there's no uh, weird stuff going on here. They they move uh, and are mobile on the on the battlefield just like any other infantry unit. However, they have, as I mentioned before, the option to do a, a tactical movement via the Doctrine card, where they can double the movement rate for a round at a cost of command points, of course, but that really gives the Prussian infantry an amazing mobility on the gaming table compared to the French. Now, this is, again, just to reflect a historical perspective where the, the French would have this uh, dug-in strategy relying on simply firing uh, away at the Prussians with the Chaspo and uh, the Prussians would just counter that strategy by being very mobile, flanking and outmaneuvering the French and doing this battle after battle after battle. 
So the needle gun range, well, uh, compared to uh, the French line infantry, the, the Chassepot have 27 inches of um, a fire range, whereas uh, the needle gun only have 18 inches. So that means that, uh, again, we are reflecting historical facts into the game stats here, and uh, the Prussian player will be faced with the same kind of challenge as a Prussian officer would be faced with on the battlefield in 1870-71. He would have to be very mobile because the French would have a longer range on their rifle fire and the Prussians would just need to close in. They can't be too defensive, they need to be on the move, they need to get in close and uh, just um, be mobile on, on the battlefield. Firepower, well, 3d6. Um, which is standard also for uh, for line infantry, both Bavarian and, uh, pro, uh, and uh, French line infantry have the same. Charge value, um, <coughs> 3d6, which is also standard for infantry, so no nothing else there to comment. And 2d6 in defensive value, which is also standard for line infantry. So it's an all-round really strong unit, especially if you use the Prussian tactics, you can get a lot out of these. Um, they are very, very uh, effective uh, when you start to add them up in numbers and spread them out in sections so two squads combined with an officer so you can keep using your doctrine card you can really put a lot of pressure on uh, specific points on the gaming table and move around quite fast well that is the key difference between the, the Prussian infantry and the French so keep that in mind if you are playing the Prussian side you are more mobile and your core infantry uh, will hit pretty hard if you get it close enough to the French. Right, so um, yeah, I can also mention the special abilities in the bottom. Uh, the tree means that the unit is uh, is able to cross wood uh, woodland, and uh, the house means it can occupy a building. Uh, these special abilities, of course, not being available to cavalry and artillery and so on. But for inf infantry, if standard infantry, these are available. So. Um, yeah, uh, I want to jump over and talk a little bit about the hero that we can attach for uh, Prussian Light Infantry, von Halden. Let's have a close look at von Halden. Yeah, so before we dive into um, the hero card for Major von Halden, I just wanted to show you uh, the actual miniature next to this uh, painting. It is from the Battle of saint Privat where uh, Van Halden, though he was shot in the arm, he actually uh, leads the in uh, 85th Infantry Regiment uh, up against uh, the French position. Uh, historical painting from the actual battle. And uh, I think the painting uh, today is hanging in the museum in uh, Gravelotte, just outside uh, the battlefield, which is a fantastic museum if you are ever in the uh, in Alsace-Lorraine, uh, you you definitely have to go to see this uh, this battlefield and the museum. Um, fantastic museum, and really easy and accessible battlefield if you're into that kind of thing. So let's jump over and have a look at Major von Halden. Now, recruiting Major von Halden is gonna set you back four command points. But what you get? Well, he has an ability called. Junker bravery. Now remember, the Junkers were these uh, Prussian uh, noble families, and a lot of these would be officers. A lot of these uh, Junker guys would be officers in the Prussian army, or uh, within the political system of the of the Prussian um, um, kingdom at that time. So, Junker bravery. Wounded in the arm, Major von Halden bravely led. 85th against the French at saint Privat. As long as von Halden is on the table, all Prussian infantry units may move two inches extra per turn. Okay, wow. So, a Prussian infantry movement now went up from six inches to eight inches. That means extra mobility compared to the French. You can you know, cross the table faster, get to those tactical objectives and increase your income, put extra pressure on the French that way. And remember, as I mentioned, they have on the doctrine card called Mit Blut und Eisen, the standard Prussian infantry doctrine card, they have an activation called Prussian Tactics, where you can actually make them do a double movement that turn at a price of one command point per squad. So you 
You can combine Major von Helden with your troops, which will make all your infantry move at 8 inches, and you can actually double that by combining this with the Prussian uh, Doctrine card. So you can move 16 inches. It's going to cost you a little bit. You're going to pay the four command points for Major von Halden, and it's going to cost you one command point per squad you want to do the extra movement with. But it will basically make your infantry just as mobile as cavalry. That's going to be a real bugger for the French. Um, you're going to be all over the table. You can be flanking them. You can be in the rear uh, all of a sudden. And you can just pounce on units that are isolated and uh, weakened, perhaps by casualties and this is going to be a huge tactical difference between the French and the Prussians. So I think personally I haven't played von Halden that much um, but the, the few times where I have used him it's been a huge uh, difference in terms of factoring up uh, this mobility together with uh, uh, the Prussian tactics. So. I haven't used him just to gain those two extra inches because that in itself, well, maybe not as interesting uh, as if I had if I have the the economy to do it. Uh, you can do it in combination with Prussian tactics, and then you got a big difference. You go from uh, to, from twelve to sixteen inches, and now that's more like it. That's when we are going to talk about making a difference on the gaming table. So. Um, yeah, I can rec I can recommend von Halden as a uh, uh, attached officer uh, for uh, attached hero for the Prussian infantry when you are able to actually spend those two extra command points per round on uh, on their tactical movement in a um, game a two uh, a two person a two player game where you have only three uh, tactical objectives on the table. Um, it might not always be as relevant because you'll have other things you need to, to, to spend your command points on but in a bigger game where you have maybe two players aside and there are five tactical objectives and the, um, the, 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 the influx of, of uh, command points is higher this is certainly a strategy that you can apply as, uh, as a Prussian player so I can only recommend Van Halden in that context um, yeah so that wraps up Prussian infantry. I hope you've enjoyed um, this uh, unit analysis and the pictures and uh, the miniatures on them. And uh, well, wish you all a, a great day out there. And I hope you get some good games on the table there with your mates. And uh, have a good one. Bye bye.